I'm Martha Ramsey. I'm a board certified workers' compensation attorney in North Carolina at the Ramsey Law Firm. Today, we are going to talk about impairment ratings. How do impairment ratings in North Carolina translate into dollar figures? How do ratings turn into dollar figures? So we're going to go over those figures. Um, before I do so, it is important that you understand that if you have not returned to work making as much as you did before, that you should not value your case based on your impairment ratings. You would need to consult with an attorney and make sure you get good advice before using any of these formulas or any of these charts in your case. Okay, well let's dive in and talk about workers' compensation impairment ratings. So first of all, what is an impairment rating? An impairment rating is a percentage of loss of disability to a body part, and it's assigned by a doctor. So I'm going to give you an example. This is my stick figure, Joe, a, work, uh, a construction worker, and I've represented tons of them over the years. And so Joe, let's say, had an injury, and Joe fell down on the construction site, and he injured his ribs, and he injured his knee. And so his rib injury, while very painful, ultimately healed and came up with a 0% impairment rating because there was no permanent injury associated with the rib. But the knee injury had to have surgery. The doctor went in and removed a portion of the meniscus, and so the knee injury had a permanent injury. In North Carolina, we would expect that an impairment rating for a surgery to the knee would run between 10% as a minimum impairment rating to 15% if there were additional complications. Of course, if you had a more serious knee injury and didn't fully recover or needed a total knee replacement, these figures would not apply to you. But we're going to use this as our example today. So we know what the doctors have assigned in terms of the impairment rating to the knee. So uh, we next look to what Joe was earning before he got hurt or his average weekly wage. So he was earning $900 a week before he got hurt. Under the Workers' Compensation Act, he'd be entitled to $600 per week as his compensation rate. Okay. The way it works in North Carolina is I'm going to look at the chart to figure out how much the rated body part is worth, 200 weeks for the leg, and I'm going to take the percentage of that. So if, for example, uh, Joe had lost 100% of his leg and he was able to go back to work, um, he would be limited to compensation of 200 weeks of benefits. Since Joe lost 10% of his leg, we take the 10% times the 200 weeks and we come up with the number of weeks which is 20. And then we multiply it times the compensation rate, the $600 that he is owed under the Workers' Compensation Act. So to translate the 10% rating with the compensation rate for the leg, we get a dollar figure of $12,000. Now, it's very important to understand how an improper low impairment rating can affect your case. It may be that your doctor didn't rate you fairly. You may need a second opinion from an independent doctor to see whether your rating is correct. It's also very important that your average weekly wage be properly calculated because you can see what a difference that makes in converting your rating into a dollar figure. Average weekly wage should include bonuses, overtime, commission, any other earnings that you had prior to your injury. So it's really important that you consult with an attorney who's familiar with what impairment ratings are, what ratings are fair, and also who knows how to calculate your average weekly wage. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, call me, Martha Ramsey at the Ramsey Law Firm. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions for me, call me at the Ramsey Law Firm, 704-376-1616.